What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here, and today we're going to talk about how the hell do you fix the Halo franchise. Since the beginning of Xbox, Halo has always been the center of its universe. Whatever success Xbox had generally always resulted in Halo having a banger of a game, and with every success, Xbox started as a smaller platform to being played by millions. Due to its reputation, Halo has become a pillar of the gaming industry. However, in recent years, it seems as if the franchise has kind of taken a dip, and I can guarantee you that all the fans have voiced their opinions. Cocky bastard just loves to run his mouth. Does he usually mention me? But fear not, your boy Marsman has a plan to revitalize the Halo franchise. It's gonna be up to us to bring him back to its former glory. Can Halo return to greatness? Let's jump into it. So before we begin, we need to have an intervention. We have to realize that there is a problem here. I've been playing Halo since the age of seven and I've experienced every single Halo title, even the bootleg Raven Fire Team Edition. Most fans will tell you that the good old days of Halo were back when Bungie had taken over. And most likely I would agree with you. They had their own style and every game was nearly flawless. However, with the mantle of responsibility now shifting to three for three, a lot of people felt that there was a big shift or change that happened. Now, I'm not just talking about small changes. I'm talking about outrageous kind of monumental adjustments have been made to this franchise that make it look completely different than it was before. Chief looked bulky. The enemies just look straight up ugly. And the art style that we all know and love is just completely gone. The story had now been directed closer to the lore of the franchise, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Throughout the entirety of 3 for 3 story games, it's just been completely inconsistent. The gameplay was different depending on which game you played. Halo 4 was a loadout shooter trying to mirror Black Ops. Halo 5 was ultra high speed. Let's sniff some Cheeto dust to play this game similar to Titanfall, and Halo Infinite returned to its old roots, but even then, you don't really see any consistency there. So with all this mishmash and change, a lot of the fans are saying, what the hell's going on? And the image of Halo had shifted completely from being the face of Xbox, now being essentially a bastard child that is in hopes of a redemption arc. And maybe it's because in this era of modern gaming where essentially almost all projects are unfinished and broken, but Halo has been now been considered one of those game franchises that have lost its touch. You gotta admit, Rift 3 definitely was part of that issue. Just like any intervention, it's pretty much simple. I have a four step plan to get Halo back on its feet and we must follow it to a T in order for it to finally get back to where it should be. We need to address the multiplayer, not just in the short term, but in the long term of the series, making sure that they are consistent. A narrative that recaptures the magic that the series is most known for, fixing the image of the franchise, not just in gaming, but in all media, and involving the community to help guide the rehab process. If Halo can follow my plan, I can guarantee that we can bring this series back to where it belongs as a pillar of the gaming industry. Let's start off with the multiplayer, since I feel like this is the most important feature that needs to be adjusted, and it's probably the quickest one that can be fixed. In the short term, I think we need to focus on Halo Infinite and Halo Master Chief Collection. A lot of people are just saying to get rid of 3 for 3 and all the problems would be fixed, but it's not going to be as simple as that. Come on, man. Say what? Personally, 3 for 3 is going to be here to stay for the long term. You're just going to have to get used to it. Halo Infinite's biggest problem from the very beginning was its lack of content. Most fans can agree that Halo Infinite that we see now compared to what we saw in its launch is completely different and it's almost 10 times better than the crap that we saw when this game first dropped. We have plenty of modes to play and with the introduction to Forge, it seems like the possibilities are kind of endless. And with the updates that are continually expanding upon Forge's capabilities, it seems as if Infinite's tr now trying to include more of those Forge made maps that make the game just more fun overall. When it comes to my plan for Halo Infinite, it's honestly quite simple. Allow 3 for 3 to hire more employees to allow them to continually add content to Halo Infinite for the near future. We have now seen that Microsoft has ended the hiring freeze and it seems as though they are starting to hire more employees to these companies under the Microsoft umbrella. So this tells me that is that it's possible to do. The goal for Halo Infinite should be to be that bridge game that gets us to the next installment of the Halo franchise. There have already been seen some lead content in weapons and equipment and maps in seasons five and six, and it tells us that they are planning to add more things for the future. Bring back old weapons, bring back old equipments, bring back all those old classic maps that people really want to jump back into. Get the community on your side when it comes to Forge implementation in the playlists. All these things that you bring back will only kind of create excitement for the Halo franchise, and you can already see when you add just a playlist made of old maps made from the community, people will jump back in in the thousands and come back and play the game. And it's not just going to be for Halo Infinite, you should continue this also for MCC. The recent July update for MCC had showed that there were thousands of people that jumped back into that game due to the fact that the mod tools 
were now being included for the PC players. Things like custom 8 player firefight, old maps that were never reintroduced into the series. I would recommend expanding upon these mod tools and even consider adding these to the console so that people on more different platforms can play it. It's kind of crazy that updates as small as these bring so much excitement to games that are roughly more than 10 years old and people are just going to be excited to jump into new content that even just the community had been involved with. 3 for 3, go and hire the community members like the mod team or the Forge Council to be more involved in these games in the continuation of content being added to them. So what this tells me is, is that if you add content in things like maps, modes, weapons, and, and other things, people will come back to play. I want more. You can't tell me that this franchise is dead when you can add one small update and all of a sudden thousands of people will jump back into it just to try it out. Now for the long term, this is going to be more involved in the next game in the Halo franchise. It was confirmed that Certain Affinity is working on the next Halo project in the coming years. Now, a lot of rumors have been going around saying that the Battle Royale has been put on hold or that it's the next thing is only a Battle Royale or now it's only an entire game. We don't really know the full answer yet due to the fact that there has not been anything publicly stated. All we do know is that the next Halo game will be utilizing the Unreal Engine Certain affinity is involved, and we know that 3 for 3 is also going to be involved as well. Now, some people are going to be questioning on whether or not using the Unreal Engine is a great idea going forward for Halo. You have mixed reviews on this entirely. Some people really like the idea, mainly because of the fact that Unreal Engine is a lot easier to manage with a lot of developers having experience in that entire engine, meaning that these updates can come a lot faster and there's a lot more you can do with it. While others are going to be more skeptical about this, mainly because the Blam engine has been used in many different Halo games and you might lose that Halo feel when you shift engines to be in the Unreal Engine. What makes me feel a little bit better about this is the head of Certain Infinity, Max Holberman, was the head multiplayer designer for Halo 2, one of the most popular Halo games of all time. Part of my plan would be that Certain Infinity should be given the reins to control the next Halo game, especially when it comes to its multiplayer aspect. Work alongside 343 in developing the game itself, but you should have Certain Infinity take the lead on the multiplayer aspect. I'd love to see its software make a jump into this as well, or even other developers that have experience in this field. Halo has always been one of those franchises that has been so massive in popularity, but seems to always be lacking resources to fully get the help they need to develop a complete game. And I'm not just talking about 3 for 3, I'm talking about Bungie. The infamous story of Halo 2 nearly not being complete by its launch date, mainly because they didn't have enough resources for their goals in which they wanted to have. Why can't Halo be like The Last of Us? Why can't it be like one of these massive gaming franchises that have thousands of people working on them? Why? Call of Duty has hundreds of people working on its games every year. Why is it that Halo has the least amount of people and expected to make the same level of game every single time it's been created? Give them the resources that they need in order for them to make this grand massive game that Halo has always been and I can guarantee you people will love it. And the most important aspect of this plan is to make a complete multiplayer game. Not this crap where we start off with only four maps and then we add maybe two more five months later. No, no, no. I want us to get a full experience. I want all these staples of Halo included at launch. I want big team battle there. For getting the battle royale, I want that as well. I want Forge. I want Firefight. I want all these things included at the launch of the game. You serious? The reason why Halo Infinite had such a difficult time getting its footing is because it had a lack of content right from the start. The next installment should be learning from the mistakes of the past, not following in the same problems every single damn time. If Halo Infinite was kneecapped right at the very start for not having content, that means Halo 7 should have all the content in the world and no one should be debating whether it is playable or not. And if you promise us things like couch co-op or customizations, then give us those damn promises. Don't just say something to make people feel good and then just turn around and completely miss the mark. Halo's multiplayer doesn't need to have an overall just to be fun. All it needs is all the content there to be at launch, not a damn year later. One of the major questions that a lot of people have at this point is what the hell is going to happen to the Halo narrative going forward? With 3 for 3 announcing that they are holding any story-based content for Halo Infinite, the question now is, when's the next time we're going to get a story campaign or a story expansion in this universe? Now, this might be a bold take, and I might get a lot of hate in this video for saying it, but I honestly think the Halo Infinite story was pretty damn good. What you say is heresy. I think the biggest problem that Halo Infinite faced, just like a lot of 343 games and a lot of modern games recently, was the cut content that was originally there at the start. The biomes weren't there, the Banished didn't get enough screen time, 
That was really the biggest problems I saw. But the overall narrative and the story component was still pretty good. Now, when it comes to the plan I have for this narrative, I feel as if you need to continue Master Chief's story, especially because of the fact that Halo Infinite kind of set it up to be a pretty good starter game for a new trilogy or an expanded lore to this situation. If you're thinking about the short term, maybe you can create expansions of the situation that's going on currently in the Halo Infinite. You can make it where different parts of the ring are being explored by different people that are still left in the dark on whether they lived or not. There are characters like Locke, Fireteam Osiris, Blue Team, Arbiter, all these people who were never mentioned at all in Halo Infinite, it seems as if they are planning to have expansions to go into their stories. I know that Locke is a completely lifeless character, but his backstory is pretty interesting. But if I was going to give a plan for him, I'd say, why don't you have things with Locke and Chief working together to give him some redemption? Even his doofy ass deserves a redemption at some point. You can easily go into the continuation of the story and allow for characters like Locke and others to get their time in the spotlight and you can actually continue this open world concept. Infinite kind of left it in a really good spot where you don't have to just ditch the story completely. You can continue it and actually have a pretty good setup for multiple different plot points that you can do. If you're following in the open world concept, you can have each character have their different side stories or missions that you can follow along and give them some more time in the spotlight and give chief things to do. You can even follow in Destiny's example and do seasonal story content where you drop smaller stories in different months so it allows you to continue to expand upon the story but not have to have the entirely massive game in order to do it. And I love the open world, but if you're deciding to move away from it, then it might make your life a lot easier when making a more linear path story, just like all the other Halo games were. You can include exploration in these different missions, but make it more linear so it's actually a lot easier for you to manage and get the game done and complete with content. But if you want to continue the open world concept, then I would highly recommend working with another studio that actually has experience doing that. I feel like teaming up with teams like Gearbox that actually have made open world games before actually might help in this situation now gearbox barely can make their own game right but actually getting some help here might actually make the, the development of the game be a lot more quicker give us some content make the life full in this world don't promise us new biomes and animals and all these different things you can do and not really fulfill that promise so that was a lie as much as the launch of halo infinite was a struggle you can't say that the story wasn't a good one. It was probably 343's best story game that they dropped to this point. And if they actually have resources and actually have help making their story as full as possible, I can guarantee you that Halo Infinite would have been even a more loved game. But I feel like the most important part of the plan is simple. Be consistent. You had a good story with Halo Infinite. Don't just kill off any semblance of plan and get rid of anything good that you already started. The banish shouldn't just be wiped off the face of the earth. The endless shouldn't just be gone away. You can continue the story of Halo Infinite it, but just be consistent. We've seen it before that 3 for 3 has always washed away old games ideas when a lot of people actually did like them. Another avenue you can have to expand the universe is to also work on side games. Games like Halo Wars were pretty solid and well liked and it actually expanded the game to be in more different genres than just being an FPS shooter. Maybe working alongside Creative Assembly or Blizzard can expand upon different genres that you might be able to do with Halo. You can even focus on ODSTs or other side characters and expand the genres to be more different types of games. Imagine you had a game that followed Johnson in his early years in the UNSC. Oh, I know what the ladies like. Or following the Arbiter when he was a general in the Covenant. All these stories that were never really explained or dove into in the games could be really cool to now really show this to the public and say, hey, this is a massive universe that we are covering. It's not just Master Chief's story, it's everybody's story. And I feel as if, if it means working with other studios to help develop the story of Halo, then I think it should be done. I don't wanna hear this crap that we need to put the narrative on hold completely. The narrative of Halo was probably one of the most unique and loved aspects by most gamers. Most of the time you see FPS games just be a run and gun, with no story aspect really cared about. But Halo was always consistent on making a great story and fun multiplayer, which made it so famous. You don't wanna fall into this trap where you just remove narrative from your games completely and you only prioritize multiplayer. Look at Battlefield. The fact that they are no longer have a story based content and if their multiplayer fails, they suck ass. And it clearly showed. Look at Overwatch. They promised that we're gonna have all these new game modes and content and now they're gonna scrap or delay story based content entirely. What the hell do you have now? That is one big pile of shit. Halo is most known for its story and not have it continue will definitely be heartbreaking. It will rely on the fact that it could be stay consistent in its narrative going forward 
and with the help of outside studios, I can see it happen. Now, one of the most difficult and grossest aspects of the plan is to try to fix the image of Halo. Now, I'm not just talking about gaming. I'm talking about all of media. I mean, most people with a brain cell can tell you that Halo is considered to be one of the most famous gaming franchises out there, and it holds a lot of weight. And people that tell you otherwise are really losing it. But for newer gamers or people who don't know the series, they usually look to projects like the Halo show and assume that this is the famous Halo story. And just like those hoarding shows, I need to be the expert to remove all that crap out of the house. And one of the first things I can think of that I want to burn as fast as humanly possible is the Halo TV show. I have made a review on every episode of the Halo TV show to this point, and it was a completely dreadful experience. I was happy knowing that the season was going to end, and I really hope that it would just die out completely. Now, you can understand my dismay when they announced that there is a season two of the Halo show, and it's almost ready for us to see it and enjoy all of its great and wonderful it's, it's going to be crap. Now, I'll have a whole video on when season two drops, and I'm not looking forward to seeing what it is. And part of my plan would be to ditch the show completely. Good riddance. Season one literally butchered the Master Chief, and it was an utter disgrace. To fix the image of the Halo series when it comes to TV shows or outside media, I think we need to prioritize sticking closely to the lore of the games as much as possible. And maybe it's best we start something new that's not from the mainline games so we can try to wash out all the crap that the Halo show had already done. Part of my plan would be to sign with HBO or Netflix to start shows following different side characters or groups within the Halo universe. Maybe follow the ODSTs or Noble team that kind of mirrors a Band of Brothers storyline that kind of shows the brutalness of war and what happens when you lose people around you. I think people would love an idea of having a Noble Team show that shows everything that happened before the fall of Reach, and if the show is getting popular, then you can actually follow the games to kind of mirror what happens at the very end of the show entirely. Imagine seeing the creation of the Spartan program, seeing Noble Team formed and facing off against Human Rebellion. That would be pretty badass. A successful show that shows off the universe of Halo, not just the Master Chief, will only get this franchise back on seat a little bit faster when it comes to new gamers or people just wondering about the show. I mean, if you look at the examples of the Super Mario movie or the Last of Us TV show, it could shows you a perfect example of what happens if you do it the right way. There are so many people out there that ask me about the Last of Us game series, about what happens in it, if it's close to the show, mainly because of how popular the show ended up being. And I made a whole video about how to make a good game adaptation, and it's really not that complicated. Halo deserves so much better, and what Paramount Plus did was a complete disgrace. Part of my plan would say that we cleanse the show completely because Halo deserves a lot better than that. And the final part of the plan I think is the most important is the involvement of the community. Now let's be real, there have been a lot of outrageous things that the Halo fans have said that they wanted with the Halo franchise and just the overall outrage that we've seen. But one of the things I can agree with what a lot of people have said is that 3 for 3 seems as if they've never really listened to the community when developing their games. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? Don't believe me? Let's look at Halo 4. A lot of people were upset that when Halo Reach had dropped, Bungie's last hurrah before they left to go create the greatest game ever made, they included a lot of abilities that changed Halo completely. And Halo fans were outraged. They didn't want abilities in Halo. They wanted a arena shooter that kept it closer to Halo 3 and its gameplay. So what did 343 do? They added more abilities into Halo 4. They made it a COD game that was not COD. When the fans were outraged, with Halo 4's multiplayer, what did 343 do? They went to a higher speed multiplayer where you had to sniff Cheeto just in order to be successful. So then when Halo Infinite finally drops, we actually get the right gameplay, the right art style, but there's missing content. There's no customization. There's no progression system. There's no things that fans wanted from the very beginning. It only took us six to 12 months later to finally get some of these aspects that should have been there at launch. You blew it! You had it all and you blew it! See what I mean? So when I tell you that part of the plan is to include the community, you, you better damn listen. It's hard to have that intervention at times, but we need to learn from our mistakes from the past so that we don't do them in the future. Now, I know it's not just going to be 3 or 3 working on these Halo games going forward, but whoever is working on it needs to work alongside the community along the way. Have internal polling, hire fans from the community to work on games. We saw what can happen in MCC when you give modders a chance to show what they got. We saw what the Forge Council can do. Have these community outreach events where we get to see some content that you're developing so we can give you feedback. You only have one first impression. If you fail at that, then you're not going to have a lot of people coming back for more. If you ask an average fan about what they feel about the Halo franchise and its 
future, most people will tell you that they are concerned about what will happen going forward. And if you ask any gamer on whether or not they can return to its former glory, most people will tell you a straight up no. And when you look at Halo, you need to recognize that it is a legendary franchise and a major staple of the gaming industry. And most people can recognize the fact that if you're making a Mount Rushmore of gaming, Halo would be up there. Unfortunately, in recent years, Halo has been stuck in a funk and it's been very difficult to get themselves out of. This intervention needed to happen due to the failures of 343 and Microsoft for not really giving enough attention to one of its most beloved franchises. But even with that being the case, Halo Infinite had one of the biggest launches in its entire series history, hitting 20 million players within its first two months of the game being launched. Even Halo 5 as a title had one of the largest Xbox exclusive openings in history. So when people tell me that Halo can't compete in this modern era, I'm gonna call bullshit on that. I know that Halo can compete in this era and return to greatness. In regards to FPS multiplayer shooters, most of them are utterly trash and any standard title can be regarded as a major success I mean, just look at Modern Warfare 2. Even Halo fans are dying to get themselves new content. Small updates to MCC and Halo Infinite had caused thousands of players to jump back into the games, which tells me that there is a fan base dying to jump back. Having a Halo game that resembles the gameplay of old, similar to Halo Infinite, and including content that should be there at launch, will have an automatic boost from the fans. Continuing the narrative that made Halo famous will only set itself apart from all FPS games that are refusing to make story-based content. And the right image from the outside media and the inclusion of the fans will go a long way in getting this franchise back to where it belongs. Halo as a franchise is unique and its legacy is unmatched. Even if it stumbles, I can guarantee if Halo follows my four-step plan, not only can it be successful, but it can return back to its greatness. How would you fix the Halo franchise? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.